I don't see how the EFCC will go and arrest uh, a, a, a former governor and come through the rooftop. Senate confirms Ola Olukoyade as substantive chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. President of the Senate, Godfrey Akabio, visits Tinubu, reiterates Senate's commitment to national unity. Also in the news, National Assembly Service Commission convenes capacity building for State Assembly Service Commissions. It really emphasizes the need for excellent efficiency and effectiveness in parliamentary services to ensure that our legislative bodies can optimally fulfill their duties. Good evening and welcome to Parliament News. I am Ene Ojonuba. Call it a season of appointments and you may not be wrong. Nigeria's Senate has remained consistent in its commitment to further confer on the appointees the constitutional rights to exercise their functions. It was the turn of the new chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ola Olukoyede, the secretary, Mohammad Hamad Joda, who took the stand in the Red Chamber to inform Nigerians what they have in the kitty to curb corruption. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The eagle is a symbol of the EFCC, and so when the chairman and secretary appeared before the Senate for screening, the lawmakers asked what new tactics they will deploy using the eagle eye to combat corruption. Investigation before inviting and detaining the person, because otherwise you end up detaining innocent people, and at the end of your investigation you find out the person has not committed the crime, then what should the person do? Should he also sue you? Most of the investigations are concentrated on government and governmental agencies. You hardly hear of financial institutions. I don't see how the EFCC will go and arrest uh, a, a, a former governor and come through the rooftop as if they are taking uh, Pablo Escobar. I was also an officer in the Temple of Justice. We are going to do our work diligently with utmost respect to the provisions of the law. You can't fight anti-corruption successfully without respect to the provisions of the law. Also, as the Senate for screening was the national coordinator of the National Social Investment Programme Agency, who told the lawmakers that the compassion of governments needs to be digitized for desired impact. This will make implementation of policies and projects under the agency easy. They were all confirmed. Meanwhile, Apabio has announced the appointments of Senator Lola Ashiru as the deputy Senate leader, while Senator Ongekachi Ngwebongi took the seat of Deputy Chief Whip to fill in existing positions outside plenary. Senate Committee on Science and Technology has engaged the Minister Uche Naji on how to develop the sector. Also, the Senate Committee on Tertiary Education and Tet Fund at its inaugural meeting expresses the hope that the present administration will channel resources to meet Nigeria's education need in line with the demands of the 21st century from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Wednesday's plenary at the House of Representatives started and ended in closed door. At the resumption of plenary for the day, votes and proceedings for Tuesday, 17th October 2023 were approved and Speaker Tajuddin Abbas called for an executive session. After about two hours, the House reverted to open session and adjourned the day's sitting as issues discussed were not made public. The Senate President Godfrey Akpabio says the Senate remains united despite a situation leading to an emergency closed-door session on Tuesday. Senator Akpabio, who spoke to State House correspondent Musbao Dan Wahab after a meeting with President Bola Tinubu describes the, the disagreement as part of traits of the Parliament. The Senate President said the National Assembly is focused on supporting the current administration with proper legislation and oversight functions in order to move the nation forward. 
uh, sometimes we disagree to agree. But the major thing is that we are all working in one accord. Uh, there is uh, no problem at all. Um, even if some people di disagree on, the, on some of the if happenings in the Senate, still it's only majority decision that eventually prevails. And uh, Parliament is like that. But we'll never get to a point of throwing chairs. We'll never get to that point. The Senate is too matured and full of matured people. So if we have a disagreement, we immediately go into a closed session, resolve it and come out smiling. Beyond renewing the hope of Nigerians, the current administration is aiming to renew the belief of the citizens in the unity and greatness of the country. President Bola Tinubu is setting this as a priority as he has directed the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, to institute a national discourse to facilitate this goal. Uh, the Mr. President has given me a marching order to see that uh, Nigerians believe in this country once again. We are coming up with a national discourse on uh, orientation and reorientation, as you will say, so that Nigerians can believe in their country. Um, you know that uh, people don't believe even in leaders, uh, people, leaders that they themselves have elected. Uh, flags are not flying anymore. Uh, you go to government offices, you don't even see the symbol of our collective existence flying even in public buildings. We're bringing that, uh, that, that about. We're bringing back uh, this concept of uh, a discipline that uh, Nigerians should have, patriotism, uh, believe in the nationhood that uh, our founding fathers have told us. So it's going to be a new Ministry of Information and National Orientation, and National Orientation is going to be at the center of it. Uniformity in the activities and programs of the various assembly service commissions across the country remains critical to excellence in parliamentary service. This is coming from the symposium convened by the National Assembly Service Commission seeking to synchronize activities of national and state parliamentary bureaucracies. Ignatius Nkwo reports. Four months after the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly, the National Assembly Service Commission has impact on capacity building for members of state parliamentary commissions, the ninth in the series. The focus is to ensure good legislation for democratic governance through excellence in parliamentary service. Unity of peoples is at the core of this advocacy. Most of the state assembly service commissions have been in touch with us, they have been in contact with us, they have been sharing ideas with that. So we acknowledge that partnership and we hope to continue for our mutual benefit. You see, a country must have what we call national focus. If there will be growth and development, there will be a national focus. The conference is to further converse uniformity of law establishing parliamentary service commissions, facilitate financial autonomy of the commissions, and for state commissions to optimize the capacity building mandate of the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. Every assembly requires the service of the expert to analyze dense documents, draft bills and motions, prepare oversight questions, conduct research and produce briefs. It really emphasizes the need for excellent efficiency and effectiveness in parliamentary services to ensure that our legislative bodies can optimally fulfill their duties to the people. It's only through excellence that we can craft the legislations that we need to support in providing state-of-the-art facilities. Concerns over the need for autonomy for the National and State Houses of Assemblies Commission reverberated is to associate myself fully with the call to ensure and formalize fully the independence of the National Assembly Service Commission. Parliament are the lifeblood of any democratic society and the quality of their service directly impact the well-being of the members of that society. Ensure that uh, all the members of the Assembly Service Commission rhyme together in all their decision taking. So far, 33 state houses of assembly have service commissions and more than 100 members are participating in this capacity building. Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. Still to come, correspondent revises the menace of one chance in the federal capital territory and its attendant security challenges. Stay with us.
Are you looking for a short channel to make your business, goods and services go viral? Look no further as NTA Parliament is your short channel. Take advantage of our wider reach and advertise your products and services on NTA Parliament DSTV channel 370, Go TV channel 126, Star Times channel 306 and Free TV channel 706. For more inquiries, contact the marketing department NTA Parliament, NTA Headquarters Area 11 Gerke Abuja or call these numbers 080-383-40464 or 080-770-78055. NTA Parliament, strengthening Nigeria's democracy. The Federal Capital Territory has been in the eye of the storm in the last couple of weeks with the recurrent threat to security as one chance run rampage. How have residents fared in the face of the challenge? What is the response from the police and other sister security agencies in these developments? Our correspondent Onotsu Yakubu sought answers to this. Before now, their operations were majorly restricted around the expressways of Nyanya Ewayo Kubwazuba or the airport road axis. But recently, the new trend to the activities of suspected daredevil syndicates of one chance leaves much to be desired for FCT residents. The city center is no longer safe as they come in at will to ferry on suspecting victims they call in as taxis. One girl came to this park. She said she was going to Dubai. We told him, I we told her that the price is 400 naira. She won't be able to pay the 400 naira. She's looking for 200 naira, 250 vehicles. She go from there, just from there. She entered one motor. The following day, the girl came. He said, one chance attack her. Normally, when we're entering a taxi, I don't leave their hands. Do you understand? I hold their hands. The, while she was entering, I'm supposed to enter with her before my other um, son would enter. So the moment she got into the taxi, the driver drove off. Before they were operating outside the main town, but now they are coming in, which means the security of the state is threatened, the security of the nation is threatened, the security of the FCT is threatened. On their part, the FCT police command says it is not leaving anything to chance in the raid to port the nation's capital of the menace. An effort which led to the parade of several units of vehicles recovered as exhibits in weeks-long anti-one-chance sting operation across the city. I was in the cell when I see uh, SARS people came and said they are transferring the case to SARS. So I went to the SARS, they were alleging me of one-chance case, which I haven't seen anybody complain against me. The advice I've always been given, if you don't want to fall into the wrong hand, get to motor park, you enter a vehicle, because all the motor parks have the identity, the plate number of the drivers. And if you do that, you will not fall into the wrong run. With the ongoing operation, the Commissioner of Police reiterated commitment and willingness to always work with residents to defeat crime in all its form across the territory. Onotu Yakubu, NTA News. The House of Representatives says it will scrutinize and swiftly pass the 2024 appropriation bill once it is presented by President Tunubu to sustain the January to December budget cycle. This was emphasized during the inaugural meeting of the House Committee on Appropriation. National Assembly correspondent Amina Seidu reports. Chairman of the Committee on Appropriations, Abubakar Bichi, says the committee will facilitate pre-budget meetings with relevant MDAs and sustain a collaborative relationship with its counterparts in the Senate and other stakeholders. In parallel of this significant duty, the committee leadership will initiate a strategic meeting with a chairman of finance, national planning and aid, loan and debt management to gather data that will facilitate the effective function of this committee of ensuring inclusive budget preparation, 
appreciable implementation and effective oversight. Members assured the chairman of the support and commitment towards achieving the core mandates of the committee. Uh, the chair is definitely going to work with the members with a view to ensuring that you know we have efficiently delivered the required assignment. The House Committee on Appropriations is vested with the responsibility of appropriating funds for the execution of government projects and programs. From the National Assembly, I'm Ina Seidu, NTA News. Sustainable development driven by responsive governance is only achievable when the capacity of the actors are enhanced. This was the view of the resource persons at the retreat for the members of the seven House of Assembly members in Ebony State. Caleb Ogbonna reports. In recognition of the critical role of the legislature in nation building in terms of lawmaking, budget appropriation, public account management, oversight functions and investigations, informed the retreat for the 7th Ebony State House of Assembly as one of the measures towards enhancing standard legislative practice and procedures for the well-being of citizens and better legislature executive relationship. This is pure different arm of government. And the business of the House of Assembly is not what you get from classroom. So you must sit down with the ESF and think, why did my people elect me to represent them? What do I have to offer? How do I offer those things? Your will power is for you to come together. <coughs> Once you are together, work with your speaker. Don't mind whatever presentation governor is making. Governor's feeling is not your concern. It's only speaker that feels the governor's feeling. And constitutional democracy cannot grow when legislators are not fully autonomous. Whatever thing you could, do it to make sure that the prestige of the House of Assembly stands. The retreat is expected to furnish the legislators with the requisite capability to successfully navigate their legislative duties, devoid of infraction and intimidation. The House of Assembly will always provide all the legislative apparatus or needed for, all, for the government to succeed. We have assembled qualified resource persons to do justice to this workshop. With the team enhancing standard of legislative practice and procedures for better legislature executive relationship, it is expected that the retreat will afford the legislators the knowledge for effective collaboration with the executive arm for sustainable development. In Abakaliki, Kelebu Bonna, NTA News. Kogi State House of Assembly has made an urgent appeal to the state government to renovate the deteriorating. Abedjukolo General Hospital. The primary objective of this appeal is to equip the hospital adequately to meet the growing medical needs of patients within and beyond Omala local government area in the state, as moved by Umar Yahaya. Ajibola Christopher reports. Expanding on the motion within the legislative chamber, Umar Yahaya clarified that at one point in time, Abedjukolo General Hospital served as the sole health care provider for residents of Omala. Regrettably, it has fallen into disrepair due to neglect by relevant authorities responsible for its maintenance. Yahaya pointed out that the lack of proper medical care has resulted in the unfortunate loss of lives among the local residents. Pregnant women, in particular, have been exposed to unqualified health care providers Consequently, the people of Amala have resulted to seeking medical statuses from substandard chemist shops, resulting in medical complications and fatalities. The neglect of this hospital have given rise to numerous private medical facilities in the region, which charge exorbitant fee while offering substandard services. Our pregnant women today are exposed to what as a result. Residents of Omala are now left to patronize chemist shops that are most of standard lead to further rise in medical complications and deaths. Agonize not only by the plight of the pregnant women, but also by the increasing rate of accident victims due to the failure of the hospital to effectively carry out the emergency service. 
Amala residents, travelers, and indigenous alike now look up to this honorable assembly to rescue them. Mr. Speaker. As a resolution, Umar Yaya proposed that the State Ministry of Health conduct an immediate assessment of the deplorable state of Abejukolo General Hospital and takes appropriate measures to reinstate proper medical services to the community. Additionally, he implored the state government to allocate funds in the 2024 appropriation bill for the transformation of Abejukolo General Hospital into a specialized medical facility. Seconding the motion, Ochedi Usman Shehu, the representative of the Kinabi Raidu State Constituency, stressed that the issue of inadequate health care facilities is not unique to Omala alone. He highlighted the shortage of medical personnel in various health care facilities across all 21 local governments in Kogi State and urged the state government to employ new doctors to alleviate this problem. The problem he highlighted here is not uh, just Omala local government. It's peculiar in almost 21 local government in Kogi State. Some local government have a, a lot of health facilities built by this present government. Unfortunately, we have a program of personnel. I have discussed this matter with the Honorable Commissioner of Health before today. And the response was, they already wrote a memo to His Excellency to grant them opportunity to employ new doctors in Kogi State. In response to the motion, the Speaker of the House, Aliu Umar Yusuf, instructed the Committee on Healthcare Social Services to conduct an on-the-ground evaluation of hospitals across the state to assess their conditions and identify potential legislative interventions. Ajibola Christopher, NT News. Delta State House of Assembly warns the State Governor, Sheriff of Barevari, to direct the Ministries of Women Affairs community and state developments, basic and secondary education, and other relevant government agencies to check street hawking or loitering by children of school age during school hours or at any other time. This was contained in a motion by the House at Plenary. Correspondent Godfrey Nzukwe reports. Presenting the motion at the floor of the House, member representing Oshimli South constituency, Bridget Fechukuku Anyafu, urged the state governor, Sheriff Oborewori, to direct the appropriate authorities to check street hawking, arms begging, rising incidents of cleaning of windshields of vehicles, among others, by children of school age. I therefore urge this honorable house to support this motion, if implemented, to direct the Ministry of Women Environment that will produce responsible and well-educated children, good ambassadors for Delta states, anywhere in Nigeria and the world. It will also give our children the website foundation, the need for a great future, and thus promote prosperity, stability, peace, and security for our society. Why some members supported the motion, others kicked against it. Mr. Speaker, I am deeply pained, particularly concerning the issue of these children who are within the age bracket of 8 and 12, found in the streets, spraying soap water on very waste to clean them. And in some occasions, when you refuse to attend to them, the rain causes on you and they run away. Mr. Speaker, just as it is said that they are the leaders of tomorrow, if we do not check these activities of these students today, they will become the amrivers of tomorrow. I want to suggest, this is about letting the children, they should be, the general state has to have the facility to have the money to provide a facility where these people, these students, doing the work. Can be well taken care of. Because if we don't take care of the students, 
they will be our undoing tomorrow. We must sit with this committee to address these concerns and pressing issues. It's not just in amending the laws and um, setting up marshals, but also ensuring that the work is being done. That this honorable house do now call on the governor of Dow State, His Excellency Right Honorable Sheriff Oboro Ori, to direct the ministries of women affairs community and social development to check street parking and loitering by children of school age during school hours or at any other time, monitor and carry out surveillance on streets and areas to ensure children remain in school and not found loitering, parking or begging for arms, facilitate the arrest and prosecution in a family court or any other body set up parents, guidance for adults who aid and abate the action of the child in line with applicable laws of the state. Say aye. Aye. Those against the name. Yeah. The eyes are there. The House adjourned plenary to Tuesday, October 24, 2023, in Asaba, Godfrey Nzekwe, NTA News. And that ends our news this evening. Remember, NTA stands against rape and rapists. You can follow us for news updates and other on our social media handles showing on your screen. Thanks for watching and do have a good evening. I am Ene Ojonuba.